This is the VK4502B, a German Tier 9 Tech Tree Heavy that has a notoriously bad reputation. But does it really deserve it? Is the tank really that bad? Well, let's have a closer look. Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and today we're going to have a look at this beastie, the VK4502B. But before we get into that, don't forget, smash that like button, comment, subscribe and even share the video if you're really minded to. Now what is it about this tank? It's a tier 9 German tech tree heavy and a lot of people don't like it. Why? Well, because the gun is mounted on the back. And as you can see, from the front you only get 6 degrees of depression, but you get 8 degrees at the back. So where does this little beastie sit in the tech tree? Well, you can see here it sits down the Tiger P line and it's the tank that precedes the VK7201. This tank never existed in real life despite there being some historical reference. It's not an historically correct tank. I mean, they toyed with the idea, but all the, it, it, it's, it's based on the Tiger P, which is the Tiger Porsche. But all the Porsche hulls were eventually used up in the Ferdinand, so there was no hull to go with. Same with the VK4502A, which is the tank that precedes the VK4502B. Now, ironically enough, this was the tank that used to lead you to the mouse. So until they introduced the motion, the, the motion and the VK0, uh, sorry, the VK1001, you had to go down this line to get the mouse. With the introduction of those two tanks, you now split it the Tiger P down to the VK1001, along to the Maoshin, and then you get the mouse, with the VK45 line now leading you to the VK72. Not going to lie to you, it's not the nicest of grinds. I mean, the VK4502A is, again, a tank that realistically we need to look at because it's not a fantastic tank. And the VK4502B is also a tricky tank to get used to. And is it worth getting the VK72? Well, I think it is. I mean, it's a nice tank. It's similar to the E100. It has some really interesting armor profile and it can be a very damaging tank, but a lot of people don't like it. Looking at the VK4502B's stats, you can see here the damage is not bad, especially for a tier nine heavy. It's the same as the Germans slightly less than the ST1. Rate of fire, however, is pretty poor with four and a half rounds a minute. But the penetration makes up for that. I mean, it has got good penetration. Armor, well, we'll get to that later. Speed, that's not the slowest, but it's not the fastest. Moving to the more detailed stats, you can see it's got 2,300 hit points. The armor, we'll get to. Camera concealment, well, it's a heavy, it's not great. DPM is just over 2,000 with a shockingly long reload time of 13.3 seconds. Penetration-wise, you're going to get 256, 327, and 72 off your ammo with an alpha output of damage of 460, 390, etc. Gun depression, as we saw, degrees is 8 degrees, but that's over the back and over the sides. Over the front, it's only 6, and it ain't exactly fast. Sticking it into tank compare against the other tier 9 heavies, where we've got the E75, the Maoshin, the Conqueror, and the ST1, you can see that the VK isn't underperforming. I mean, the DPM is better than its German counterparts, not as good as the Conqueror, not as good as the ST1. Penetration-wise, same as the Germans, not as good as the British and the Russian. Alpha damage, same as the Germans, better than the British and the Russian. Rate of fire, same as the Germans, not as good as the British and the Russian. Now when we move down, you can see their credit coefficient is not great. It's the same as the British. And if you notice, the win rate is also pretty poor. Sticking its premium ammunition in, and let's compare that, you'll see that it's just tipping against the German tanks in its tier, but not the British and the Russian. The same will apply when you stick in the HE, as you will see. So it outshines all of them apart from the Conqueror. Turning now to that armor profile, as you can see front on, it looks pretty mean and the gun mantle it looks pretty solid. The turret itself isn't that bad with the sides and the rear obviously being pretty weak. When I stick it against an E75, however, with its standard ammo, as you can see, it becomes a big 
red tomato. Okay, it has got a very weak lower plate and the side cheeks, if you move that to it too much, does become penable. But it's a good side scraper and as long as you move the turret, as you can see, it becomes pretty rock solid. However, if I then change it to the premium ammunition, which I'm going to do, you will see that the mantlet then becomes penable. The bottom plate is still the same, the upper plate is still the same, it is just that mantlet and you've got to be really careful. If you overturn that turret, those cheeks do become penable again. So that's the armor and the stats, but what equipment do I use? Well, I generally use this. I go for the multi-purpose restoration pack, the adrenaline, because I want that extra load time and the repair kit, because funnily enough, you do get tracked a lot. For the provisions, I normally have chocolate, because again, I want those crew to be to their best. I have the protective kit, because I want the module repairs reduced, and I have improved fuel. Why? Because I want the hull to turn. That is my general ammunition loadout, as you can see, more AP. When it comes to equipment, I generally don't run it with the calibrated shells because it has reasonable pen as it is. I prefer the gun rammer because your DPM increases. Obviously the defense system, the improved optics, no point running camo net on this tank. I don't go for the supercharge, I have the enhanced laying device, and I certainly don't have the enhanced armor, I have the improved assembly. I also then have the improved engine rather than improved control because I want better speed. And I have it with a vertical stabilizer because I want the aim time to come down, it's pretty long. So that's all the boring stat stuff out of the way once the beast actually like to drive. But before we get there, you're probably saying, Fuji, you said this was featuring every good name is taken. Well, it is because he just inundated me with loads and loads of replays of him in the VK4502B. And I thought it would be a good idea to showcase just him. If you don't know who Every Good Name Is Taken is, by the way, he's a fellow YouTuber. Um, he's got a really good channel, so get over there and subscribe to him. He's also one of the staple tournament live streamers with the commentary, so again, get over, go and watch him when he live streams. Anyway, so a lot of people don't like this tank and what happened was every good name is taken. It said to me, wow, I'm really enjoying this tank. And to be perfectly honest with you, it's not a bad tank. It's just a tricky tank. And the reason it's tricky is because of that turret on the back. Now, for all intents and purposes, it's effectively a modified Tiger P hull we're along the lines of just giving it a bit better armor and making it more like a Tiger 2 stroke E75 but it is realistically a modified Tiger P hull smacked on top of that is for all intents and purposes an E75 turret so the tank itself has really good armor especially frontally as we saw the armor profile, the bottom plate is pretty, it, it is wide open. But, and it's not a tank that you can go haul down realistically with only six degrees over the front. But the thing about this tank, the, the thing that makes it so tricky is the long reload. And it is a long reload. I mean, 13 seconds, I mean, okay, everybody's got it down here to, um, 12 odd seconds because he's put rammers in and everything which you can do but the standard is 13.3 seconds it is a long time especially when you're only knocking out 460 iron alpha damage but when you couple it with the fact that it's got really good frontal armor it is a heavy it is meant to be up close and personal it is meant to be on the front line it isn't actually that bad the other thing that a lot of people don't like with this tank is the gun handling. Now, the gun handling is pretty good. As you can see here, every good name is taken is not managing to struggle at all. But it does take some time to get that aim reticle down. Every is probably running it with the equipment to bring it down. Plus, he's got crew skills. When you first get this, if you don't have the enhanced laying device, etc., etc., then it can seem an age for that reticle to come down and it can appear that the gun handling is pretty awful. But it's not. 
in true German tank style, the gun handling is really quite nice. And you can quite easily snipe in this thing. Although I wouldn't thoroughly recommend it. It's not a tank that likes sitting at the back. It's a tank that, okay, it doesn't like being forward forward. It is more of a second line support heavy because of its long reload. I mean, don't think that because you've got good frontal armor, you're gonna be able to barge your way through and brawl yourself to oblivion. Although you can get away with bouncing a lot. You can see here, every has bounced 2,400 and dished out just under 4,000 damage. I mean, this is the thing you can do with the tank. The other thing that you'll notice is that in, in, in certain instances, like this instance now, every is, re is relocating the tank. It, and, and this is one thing that a lot of people don't do. They, they just sit there and they brawl. And that can be the death of you. And, you know, Ever is now bounced, what, almost 3,000 in this thing. He's churned out 4,000 on damage. He's bounced almost 3,000. It's a good tank in the right hands. And those hands don't have to be super unicum. They just have to be the hands of a person who knows how to play the tank. And Every clearly knows how to play it. And you need to look at replays like this to understand the mechanics of this tank. Because trust me, it will go a long, long way in improving your skills in the tank. Like I said, it's not a tank for everybody. Not everybody is going to enjoy this tank. It is a tricky heavy. But it does prepare you nicely for the next tank, which is the VK-72. Because that, that, that is also a similar type of playstyle. I mean, that's a fantastic game. 5,700 damage, bounced shy of 3,000, got two kills. I mean, sorry, 5,277 damage, two kills. I mean, it's a great game, and that is what you can do in this tank. So we've seen what it was like in the first game, and as you can see, you can bounce a lot, and it's quite a nice tank. This is every again, this time rolling out on Yukon. And as I said in my Yukon map review, look where he's going. He's going down this left side from the south spawn, which personally I think is, is the best side. It's, it's meant to not be the heavy route. It's meant to be the medium route. But you know what? I think this is the best positioning on the map. Again, v, um, every is in the VK45. And you're going to see some interesting ways to play this tank I must admit he gets a little bit lucky towards the end and you know he really does and we'll see that but it's the middle part of the game that we're most interested in now, as I said I mean this tank a lot of people think it's got really bad gun handling it, it doesn't it has actually very nice gun handling but you've got to be patient with it and you've got to get your equipment right I mean if you're only 100 you're gonna yellow in like that which was a bit daft I mean, let's be fair, then you're going to get smacked on your side. And, you know, every just so happened to have his, his gun loaded. And he does. Now, look at this. There's another VK-45 over there. Now, Every's going to sort of, look at that. He's over-angled, allowing Every to put a shot in. Every didn't try an angle there, which is why he got smacked in return. That's the problem with this tank. It can side scrape, but if you do over-angle it, you do become exposed. And again, you can see there the gun handling, if you've got a little bit of patience, does do that. And that is a huge bounce off the E100. I mean, he's just bounced 960 there. He's dished out 2,300 on damage. Okay, he's, he's been smacked around a little bit, but nothing to worry about. I mean, don't forget, this is a tier 10 game. He's a tier 9 heavy. He can take some of the, some of the hits. He can't take a lot, but he can take something out. Do you see there that VK45 just over angling slightly again exposing that side i mean he's trying to side scrape off the building correctly but he's just over angling just a little bit and that is one of the things you have to be careful of in this tank and um, unfortunately there you know that um the charioteer just stuck his nose out a little bit too much and every was able to punish him and you can see there every is just getting penned in his bottom plate it's not got the gun depression this end to go fully hauled down 
And that's the problem. So, you know, as he goes over the rise, the bottom plate is showing and the VK is getting some smacks in there. But so far, Avery has held this line, which is what the heavy is meant to do. Admittedly, his team have lost two tanks, but he's doing his... There you go again with the over angle, allowing Every to put a shot into the side. Now he's going to rotate round, and this is what I say about some players don't bother to rotate. Every is rotating round to the E100. The E100 is not focused on him, allows Every to put a nice big roll into the side. E100 is gone. Not because of every, but because obviously the other tank over there, the Vickers managed to get the kill shot in. Now he's going to push up, and again he's rotated around, changed his positioning. He's not going to be able to get shots onto the VK just yet, but you can see what he's trying to do. There we go, there we go, there's the T92, and there goes the T92. So he's now dished out 3,900 damage bounced 1500 that was a great shot by the vk45 over there who is doing very well in his tank let's be honest he's playing the game equally as well as every here unfortunately some of his team has let him down but he's stayed in a good position he's held that corner as long as possible he's got some good shots into the, um, every's vk and overall this is a really good game as you can see that side the map like I said in my map review, seems to be the most favoured. The Prochetto here is trying to push down on the E75. It's not going to work for him, bless him. And there he goes, Ever has managed to get the kill shot. We're now up to 4,000 odd damage, bounced 1,500 still. I mean, this is a good game, and this is how you should be looking to play the VK guys. He's going to switch that Pramo to get into that mantle, 412, straight into the front. That is effective use of premium ammunition, guys. Now, a lot of people say, oh, but it's Pramo spamming. The Pramo is there for a reason, gents. You need to use it when you can. And as you've seen in the tussle earlier, Every wasn't using premium ammunition. He was using standard AP. But to hit that mantle like he just did, needed to switch the ammunition, which I don't see any harm in. Um, there you go. Oh, that's a big bounce he could have done without that. As you can see, he gets Morgan depression when he goes over the back, but his rear plate is very, very weak. He's doing well against two tanks here, but Every's going to be able to get one straight into the turret for the kill shot. 4,521 damage. This is where Every gets a little bit lucky, uh, in my opinion, and in his opinion. Let's be honest, it should be in his opinion too, because the poor old T95 Doom Turtle is stuck. Um, this is what happens. A lot of people come off this edge, this cliff, thinking it's quite a nice little breeze down. It's not, it's a sheer cliff face, and that will happen. You will get stuck. And as you can see, he ain't going anywhere fast, and every is allowed to farm him, which is why he gets to almost 6,000 damage. But hey, almost 6K in this tank is bloody good going. And he got to over 5,000 anyway, so there we go. 5,925 damage, 1,500 bounced, four kills, that everybody has our you play the vk 4502b it's a fantastic game that's been my video on the vk 4502b featuring every good name is taken being as op as he can possibly be i have been fujit by all means as i said at the beginning i'd love to hear your comments on this tech i know it has a reputation i know a lot of people don't like it and, you know, this was a tank that I, I didn't overly enjoy, to be fair, but it was a must grind because I wanted the mouse. And the thing is, it's actually not a bad tank. It just takes a little bit of nurturing and getting used to. Having that bad gun depression over the front, getting used to that armor, does take some getting used to, but once you're used to it, you can have some nice fun in this thing, as every good name is taken as shown. I'd like to say a big thank you to all my subscribers for getting me to where I am at the moment. I mean, guys, without you, then these videos would be <laughs> realistically meaningless and have no purpose. And I'd like to say a big thank you to my Patreons, because without you, these videos would be a lot harder. I'd also like to be, do a big shout out to Hyperspider7, my one and only YouTube member. 
I have started YouTube memberships and Hyper Spider 7, another fantastic YouTuber and a really good friend, has kindly been my first and only member to date. So if you're interested in it, guys, by all means, have a look at all the details on the channel. And with that, I have my usual stuff to say, which is, guys, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.